Hey what's up guys, the Georgia here back again with another Shadowverse video. You guys really liked my last tier making video where I ranked each class by their cards that they are getting by Fortune's Hand. So yeah, um, definitely wanted to make this video. I had a lot of fun making the last video too. Basically my meta prediction for Fortune's Hand. Um, Fortune's Hand is coming out in a few days for the full official release. Um, and yeah, so this is my prediction of what decks are going to be in the meta and how good each deck is going to be in the meta. So just as a disclaimer, I am no psychic. I ha There might be like some decks that I overlooked and don't have in this list. I have like 23 decks in here, by the way. Um, or I'm, and everything is completely my opinion. Um, you might think one deck is a different tier than where I placed it. Um, but if you do have disagreeing opinions or or if you think there's anything that I missed, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, it's just overall good to create the discussion. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to be going over, when I place a deck in a tier, I am going to be giving some sort of reasoning why I think it's going to be in the tier that I placed it. Um, and they are going to be kind of ordered um, in each tier as well. So starting off, we have what do we have here? Alright, so Artifact Portal, I have it as a tier 2 deck. Now, Artifact Portal, so Artifact Portal is losing Augmentation Bestow and uh, Shion, and these two cards are very good in Artifact Portal. Obviously, Augmentation Bestow allows you to do some really good combo stuff, and Shion, if you're um, developed a board and your opponent doesn't respect it, you could get a huge board lead out of nowhere or later in the game you could combo Xion on your Bastao turns. So this takes away a lot of the power from Artifact Portal which used to be a tier 1 deck. Now they are getting a couple of decent Artifact cards in the expansion but um, it's not like it doesn't increase the power of the deck, it just kind of helps with the deck's uh, consistency a little bit as they are losing like Bastao which helped out a lot uh, with the deck. So I think this deck is losing a lot of the power but it's still going It's still going to be a decent deck I think and it's compared to other decks I think it could still compete in the middle and so that's why it's dropped down from tier 1 from before to tier 2 but it still remains a deck in the meta and it could still definitely compete. Okay, so next off we have Barrier Right Shadow. We have Mutiel as the avatar here. And this one's also a tier 2, I think. So Barrier Right Shadow um, basically got all the support this expansion. And I think it could do some really cool stuff. Like if you Barrier Right things like your He Who Once Rocked, and then you Bonanza He Who Once Rocked. And also if you also Barrier Right your um, that 8 drop, the Dreadlord. Um, he who wants rock will resummon it. So I think you can make some really powerful boards with the deck. Um, it would have been better if Anya was still in the meta, but she's unfortunately getting rotated out. Um, so I think Burial Ray Shadow could do some cool stuff. Um, you could build boards, some really big boards that your opponent might not be able to deal with. Although I think it lacks some consistency and maybe it's not as well fined as the other decks. Out there so that's why I place that tier 2. Next off we have burn blood now this is going to be more of the aggressive burn blood average slash average blood so basically you're just trying to get a lot of early damage and then just burn out your opponents with like rivalry claw, um, Arius rivalry and like Elia and those kind of stuff so it's a very aggressive burn blood deck but I think I'm going to place it in tier 3. So the reason why it's tier 3 is because First of all, it wasn't already like a high meta deck in the first place in the previous meta. Um, and it's not really gaining any good matchups in this meta, I think. Um, and there's a lot of decks um, that I have here that kind of are pretty good on getting onto the board. Like w later we'll see like Elena Wardhaven, um, Burial Rite, Shadow, and like Artifact Portal even as well. These decks are very good at getting on the board, so they kind of prevent your early chip damage with your followers, so it becomes a bit harder to close out games with your burn later, and a lot of decks also even have some healing. So that's why Burn Blood, I put it as a tier 3 deck. Because I think it's still a good, well-fined deck, refined deck, and it's going to win some matchups, but there's a lot of stuff in the meta that kind of pushes it down. So here we have Earthrite Rune, and I have it as a tier 2, um, and it's above Earthrite a burial right shadow but it's still below artifact portal so earth right rune they got a lot of support from fortune's hand 
And it's not before Dirt Rune used to be a very aggressive uh, burn style deck, but the support in this expansion is basically all um, mid rangey stuff. So I think this deck, like you could get good boards in the mid game, and then you have Dark Mage as kind of your finisher. Um, and I think the support is just good enough where the deck is going to be beating the tier 3s. It's going to struggle a little bit against tier 2 decks that kind of just get on the board better. Um, because if you're pre if you could, if other decks could fight the board and win the board, um, you can't really burn out your opponent with Dark Mage as your finisher later on. So it's going to be a little bit harder for this deck to compete. Um, but nonetheless, I think I got some decent cards from Rune, so I put it as tier 2 for now. But um, when the meta becomes more refined, I think it could probably it'll probably drop to like tier three actually. All right, for Ship Spain, this is representing Discard Dragon. Um, I have it as tier you're trolling um, because Discard Dragon they actually just got all the support from this expansion. Like all the support kind of went into Discard Dragon, but the support was just really bad. And I talked about this in my last video, but Dragon just got kind of dumpstered this expansion with the cards they got. And so if you're playing a complete discard Dragon deck, I think you're trolling. <laughs> so yeah, that's why it's interior trolling. There's not much more I can say about it. I don't think the deck has anything powerful. It doesn't have any like good win conditions. If you're going to be playing discard stuff, you're going to be playing it in a different type of deck like Evolve Dragon, which I'll have soon. Um, so yeah. Okay, next off we have Elena Wardhaven, and I have this as the top of tier 2 actually. Um, so Elena Wardhaven, like I said in previous videos, this deck got a lot of really good stuff. They, yeah, they got like really good stuff. But when I had the list of all the decks that I have in the meta, I think Elena Wardhaven, while being a very strong deck, um, it can't really beat the tier 1 decks that I'm going to have up here. So because of that reason, I have it as tier 2 because I think it could def it's a very strong deck. It's going to win a lot of matchups. Um, it's going to do well against other tier 2 decks in my opinion. Um, but it's going to struggle against tier 1. So if it's always going to lose to tier 1 decks, it can't be a tier 1 deck itself. Um, so that's why it's just high up in tier 2. It kind of replaces the spot of Elena Haven, Elena Makina Haven last meta where it was also on the top of tier 2. But because the other tier 1 decks kind of just kept beating it up, um, it couldn't reach tier 1. So it's kind of the same thing here. It can't reach tier 1 because the tier 1 decks are beating it. Okay, next up we have Evolve Dragon. I have Evolve Dragon in tier 3. It used to be a tier 2 deck, but um, it didn't really get any good It didn't get any support this expansion. I mean, it got some of the neutral cards, which is kind of good. Um, like that neutral 4 play point removal spell. But... Yeah, there's not really much that Dragon that Evolve Dragon got. It actually lost um, Core, so it actually lost one ramp card that was good in the deck. Um, so maybe your ramp is less consistent, or you have to play a less good ramp card. There's no new ramp card in the set too. Um, but yeah, I mean the deck is just yeah. I think because it's losing a ramp and it didn't get anything new, um, decks are going to be able to pressure you when you're trying to ramp up you don't have much sustain um so it's kind of just like a really high rolly deck where you have to hit your ramp cards and then so you could just hit your ramp into goblin war pack and then roll your zeus to kill your opponent so it's going to be a very inconsistent deck um in this coming format i think so it's not going to consistently win it's going to win sometimes because you get lucky but that's about it so that's why i have it as a tier three Following Evolve Dragon and also onto the tier list, um, Evolve Sword is right behind Evolve Dragon, I think. Now, Evolve Sword actually got some pretty okay stuff, but the cards weren't great, on my, in my opinion. They got like the Diamond Paladin, that's pretty much it. And yeah, so Evolve Sword already wasn't a good deck last meta, didn't really get any support, so you can't really expect it to get any better. Um, so there's not much I can say about Evolve Sword. It's just going to be a very slow deck, um, it, which doesn't ha and doesn't have a really strong win condition. So other decks with like just going toward a game plan to have a solid win condition is just going to beat this Evolve Sword up. So next up we have Item Shop Rune, and actually I put Item Shop Rune as tier three. Um, this deck is actually when I 
think about it, got some pretty decent cards and in this meta when you're looking at the decks, which is mainly like mid range, there's not too much like huge burst OTK combos at the moment. Um, item shop rune, and there's not that much, there's actually like very little aggro in the meta. I think item shop rune could actually be a solid deck. Um, because the cards they got were like conjuration and they got, um, oh actually let me just show you. So item shop room, they got madcap conjuration, which if they discard, um, two followers, they could destroy all followers. Um, item shop room does play a couple followers, so you could meet this condition. Um, so this card is really good in the deck. Um, also, like it could refill your hand when you have, um, item shop room active. You might be able to play some like Earthrite stuff in the deck as well. The deck also got Sudden Showers, which destroy a random follower. Um, it could destroy your own followers, but if you're not playing any followers, it's just going to destroy one of your opponent's followers for two play points and the spell that activates your spell boost. So Item Shop Room, I think, actually got some really cool stuff, and that's why I think it has it actually has a lot of potential this meta. I think so. This Item Shop Room is a deck that I'm going to be keeping a lookout for. Um, because it might actually become a actually pretty decent deck, this meta. Kind of similar to Item Shop Rune, we have Carol Rune, but I actually been putting Carol Rune in tier 4. The reason why I think Car they're both very similar, both Carol Rune and Item Shop Rune got both good support cards that um, actually work quite well with the deck, so the Conjuration and the Showers. Um, they're both going to be good in Carol, but I, I don't like how Carol is a little bit less consistent right because it's a lot slower you have to be getting your carols union versus active you have to have like three carols um and you're going to have to be playing multiple carols on consecutive turns it's just the win conditions i think is weaker than item shop rune because once you could develop item shop rune you just control the game you control the board and then you could just burn out your opponent so if your opponent doesn't have amulet removal it's really hard for them to win once you safely develop your um your item shop so um, because Carol is a lot less consistent in my opinion, I'm putting her as tier 4. Even though both Item Shop and Carol got similar support, um, Carol I don't think is as good. So yeah. So next up we have Levin Aggro Sword. I have Levin Aggro as tier 4 as well. Um, if you've seen my video on Levin Aggro Sword, it's actually a decent deck. Um, but the thing is, it has a very linear win condition. You just have to get on board early and get the early chip damage and then try to burn out your opponent with like some storm cards by turn 7-ish. But if your opponent can get onto the board and sustain themselves early and mid game, then it's really hard to finish off your opponent with this deck. So it falls off really hard and in this meta where there's a lot of like, if you look at tier 2 for example, like there's a lot, there's all mid range decks that are very good at getting on the board. So I don't think Levin Sword is going to like really get into it's not going to get the damage it wants so it's not going to win many games i think but when you look at it against tier 3 even when you look at it against tier 3 like the decks it could be like item shop rune and carol rune but that's pretty much it maybe dragon sword but dragon but yeah so next off we have machina portal and i actually think machina portal is going to be a tier 1 deck so this, this is our first deck in tier 1 um, so the reason why is because Machina Portal has been doing pretty well recently. Um, so it actually got bumped up into tier 1 in the last meta. And also the deck's not really, the deck's not losing anything. It loses Gilius. Um, that's about it. So yeah, it's just losing Gilius. Um, and there's no other cards like, uh, Hoverbird Mercenary is still going to be in rotation. So some Machina decks that don't lose many cards from Steel Rebellion. Um, Steel Rebellion, right? Yeah, they could actually still function well. So like, yeah, Machina, Portal, not really losing anything. And you could still, you're going to be able to high roll your opponent a lot with your Belfamit. Um, and yeah, it's just going to do a lot of good stuff. You still have Nam, you have Belfamit, you have the Bear. The deck still has everything. So I think while it's not getting any new cards, I think because... Like, the other decks aren't really gaining much power-ups. It can't really compete against Machina Portal because the deck didn't really have um, unfavored matchups. Like, really bad unfavored matchups. If anything, it was like slightly favored or slightly unfavored against everything. So, 
because it has such even matchups and you have the chance to high, just high roll your opponent, I think the deck is going to be tier 1. Um, it's just going to be a strong deck overall. So next off we have everyone's favorite Mr. Valdane in Natura Dragon. So Natura Dragon unfortunately is going to be god tier I think. So the reason why is the only card that Natural Dragon loses is the Draconic Core. Now Draconic Core is a very good card in Natural Dragon, don't get me wrong. It helps you ramp up into your Nam quicker. Um, post Nam, if you draw it, you could play it, maybe play your Valdain, evolve your Valdain, and then play the Corrosion on the same turn. Um, but there are, were a lot of games where you didn't have your Draconic Core to ramp up into your Nam and you didn't draw your core into your Valdain, but you still won. Um, so like this deck doesn't really lose much. And when you think about what else I have is going to be in the meta, there's not really any decks that are threatening uh, Natural Dragon. First of all, Natural Dragon didn't really have any unfavorable matchups. It just pretty much won against most things. Um, I guess Artifact Portal was a, a deck that had some struggles, but just marginally. Um, and Artifact Portal lost their good cards. They lost Xion. Like, Xion was a really good win condition against Natural Dragon and Bastel to um, keep applying pressure. So without those two, Artifact Portal, I don't think it's favor going to be favored at all anymore against Natural Dragon. Um, there's, like, Natura Rune, which is going to be, like, pretty... I think Natural Rune is going to be even more favored against Natural Dragon now just because they don't have the ramp, they don't have... Valdain quicker um, so I think losing core versus natural rune is a big deal but other than that like the deck that was beating natural dragon the most was Machina Blood and Machina Blood got rotated out so there's not really anything that beats natural dragon anymore there's like yeah like Machina Shadow is rotated out there's no more Anya no more Colossal Skull Lord um, so I think I think Natural Dragon might have maybe one or two bad matchups in this meta, but it's going to be beating most decks. Um, just because every deck is kind of slow, kind of mid-rangey, don't have too much burst. And so yeah, Natural Dragon is just going to roll over a lot of decks this meta, and that's why I place it in God tier. Next off we have Natura Blood. So this is kind of like Burn Blood, but it's the slower version, so you're playing like Spiders, um, you're playing like Cradles. And all of that stuff. So it is different than Burn Blood. Burn Blood's a lot more aggressive. Natural Blood's a lot more slower and control based. I put it as tier 3. The reason why is that this deck was trying to play um, the core, but core got rotated out, so you're not going to get plus 10 health, which does lose a lot of the sustainability. Um, the expansion from Fortune's Hand actually didn't really support um, Avarice and Natural Blood much or at all. So there's not really good cards in, there's not much support for Natural Blood. They still get to play Corrosions and stuff. They get to play Amulets and all of their Natural stuff. Um, they're, they're also going to be able to utilize uh, Neria, which is going to be a strong card still. But I don't think, um, compared to Wrath Blood, which I'm talking about later, the deck doesn't really, it's just not going to be good enough. I don't think, um, if decks are going to consistently pressure you in the mid game, and you don't have great answers to them, you won't, ha it's gonna have a hard time, I think. Yeah, especially when you're looking into like the tier, the god tiers like Natura, Dragon's just going to really crush you. Uh, Machina, Portal, like you really have a hard time dealing with Belfemid boards. Big Elena boards, you have, you're gonna have a really hard time, same as like Shadow, Burial Rite Shadow. So basically, Spider, sh spider Blood, um, it's still an okay deck, but really not going to be powerful enough against what else in the meta but against like the other tier threes in the tier four decks like it's going to have a decent time against them just because those decks are so bad as well so next up we have natura rune and i have natura rune placed in tier two um next to elena haven so natura rune i didn't lose anything from the rotation um, was already a very strong deck. Was having, it w it fell down in the meta because Machina Blood was so good against it, and because they got um, Ravenous Corruption, a uh, corrosion, corruption. Sorry, um, but Riley, 
But now that Machina Blood is gone, um, Natural Rune doesn't really have bad matchups because they don't have... Like I said, there's no real decks that are really aggressive and pushing a lot of damage. Like there's Burn Blood, but actually Burn Blood versus Natural Rune is not that bad of a matchup because your deck does heal a bit. Um, like I said earlier as well, against Natural Dragon that lost core, they got a little bit slower, so now you're going to have more time with Riley. The reason why I don't think Riley, uh, Natural Rune is going to be in tier 1 is just because it's a little bit inconsistent sometimes. Um, like you either draw your Rileys or you kind of draw a clunky hand and you can't get your combo going. Um, but pretty much that, other than that, if you're drawing, drawing like average or decently, I think you're going to be beating most decks in the meta. It just can't be tier 1 because it's slightly inconsistent and yeah, it's mainly the consistency fact. If it wasn't, if it didn't have its own problems, I think it would definitely be like in the tier 1, possibly god tier. But, um... But yeah, I think it's going to be a very solid deck, and I think a lot of people will also be bringing the deck in tournaments for certain lineups as well. So next up we have Natural Shadow. I have Natural Shadow at the bottom of tier 4. It just wasn't really a good deck to begin with. Um, very slow, and a lot of times people don't even find their thoughts. So the deck didn't get any support this expansion. Um, and yeah, it's just a very slow deck. It's going to have troubles against like very good mid-range decks. Um, obviously it leads us to dra Natural Dragon, um, Natural Rune's going to beat you up as well. There's just like, there's so many bad matchups in, I think, Tier 2, Tier 1, and against Tier 3 also, like, Item Shop Rune, for example, um, Evolve Dragon, like, these decks actually just beat up Natural Shadow as well, Carol Rune, so this deck doesn't really have any good matchups, I think, um, aside from really slow matchups, it's like, like the Scar Dragon or um, Natra Blood, so yeah, lack of consistency, not a good win condition, just tier 4. Next up I have Ramp Dragon, Ramp Dragon follows next to the Scar Dragon, um, just kind of a trolling deck. People are going to play this just because it's something new, you could play Titanic Resolve and then maybe summon a bunch of 10 cost Dragon Fallers from your hand, um, but it's going to be, it's just super inconsistent and like you're just going to lose because you don't have a good early and mid game and your late game win condition is not even that great of a win condition um and it's really hard to pull off as well so i don't think yeah i don't think this deck is going to just be good at all it might be fun to play i don't know continuing with the trolling theme we have rng sword which is playing oleon i'm not sure how this deck will look like but I'm pretty sure there's going to be players playing Sword, and they're going to be playing Oleon, just so they could try to OTK their opponent by random. And yeah, it's not going to be a good deck. Sword's already not doesn't have good cards. And um, if your win condition is just this RNG card, then yeah, you're trolling because you you can't really play this card when you're ahead. Um, but you're you're just playing this card because you just want to roll roll the dice and hit your opponent and make some people mad. So yeah, this is obviously a trolley deck and that's why it's in tier troll. Next up we have our boy Mr. OTK Roach or Control Force. I think this is also god tier. Um, this was probably obvious. I've been praising OTK Roach for the longest time in the last few videos. And yeah, like OTK Roach, they got really good support and there's not any bad matchups that I can think of. Like Roach in the past, Roach was already a tier 1 deck. It had problem matchups against like Natura Dragon, Natura Rune, and Machina Blood was kind of difficult. So, aside Machina Blood is gone, Natura Dragon, they kind of slow down a little bit. So, you and this deck got, I think, is more consistent. Roach is more consistent now. So, the combination of Natura Dragon slowing down and Roach getting consistent keeps this, makes this deck stronger. Um, yeah, Machina Blood's gone. So really, like, the deck didn't lose too much. Nature's Guidance losing was irrelevant because we have the Wolf. Um, losing Erisa's Whirlwind is kind of bad against what we see in these Tier 2 decks and the um, Machina Portal as well. But you, I think you just run Gaia, and I think Gaia's just fine. Like, Gaia against Portal and Elena Haven just destroys those matchups. Um, also, as same thing for Artifact Portal. Um, I think the only bad matchup now 
like real bad matchup is probably just going to be natural rune and that's about it i think against dragon now you're going to be pretty close so that's why i put it in god tier now which one is going to be on the top of god tier um it's really hard to say but because i'm a roach boy i'm going to put roach as number one and then dragon number two because i think roach is better against dragon and if these two decks pl are played the most um then roach is going to be dragon i think uh, of course, Roach is going to be harder to play, especially now that you don't have Aerith as Whirlwind, you don't have a great AoE. Um, so maybe it's going to be based on the player's experience as well. So that's going to play a role in it, but yeah, these two decks definitely got here. Okay, after that we have Spellboost Rune. I put Spellboost Rune in Tier 4 after 11 Sword. So Spellboost Rune, it had its time, but it's slowly slowly dying like the deck got it got like some cards actually in this expansion with the legendary but that's about it the problem with um spell boost rune is that your win condition is kind of weak and your deck is inconsistent so first of all your deck's inconsistent but if you draw it's like say okay and then you could get your quans off and stuff if your opponent deals with your quans and stuff like um, it's really hard. You're just building like boards, and, but if you're already behind, your opponent could deal with your boards, so it's not that much of a problem for them. Also, you you don't have much burst. Like, Quan has like some storm damage, but it's not that much compared to other decks. And this deck also lost, um, and this deck also lost Clark. Um, it did lose the core as well, which some decks were cutting anyways, but, uh, losing Clark... Um, you don't have as much burn damage anymore, so I think so I think Spellboost Rune, it doesn't have a good win condition, and it's a very inconsistent deck. So it, I don't even think it's as good as like the tier 3 decks, so that's why I put it as tier 4. Because I think even just Item Shop Rune is going to be better. Natural Rune is definitely going to be better. And like, yeah, so Spellboost Rune, I don't think it's going to have like good matchups. The good matchups they had in the past were like Natural Dragon, but Natural Dragon with like Viridia Magna just already deals with Spellboost Rune now. And because you don't have enough burn, I think it's going to have such a hard time closing out games. Okay, so next off we have, um, it's kind of hard to tell what this deck is, but this is actually Token Sword, or like Rally Sword. So Sword actually got like, it's the only class that got Rally Mechanics, I believe. And they have like the neutral card and some token generating cards. So like, I think there's going to be a deck out there where people just try to build boards of tokens, play Rally cards and get some buffs it's not going to be a good deck though because you're just going to get like decent sized boards which kind of don't even beat like elena haven and like the other good mid-range decks and you have no like end game no win condition so i don't think this deck will win that much i think it's going to beat rng sword at least though so because the rng is just going to hit your little tokens so it has that but it's not even going to beat like the scar dragon or ramp dragon so <laughs> it's definitely a very low tier trolling deck i think next off um from actually when you look at our top tier decks they're just pretty much old decks but we have wrath blood and i put wrath blood up here in tier one actually um at the bottom of tier one actually it could be better than machina uh, portal but right now i have it on the bottom of tier one um, I think Wrath Blood, it got really good cards, and with uh, Permafrost Behemoth as your finisher, um, like you're going to be doing really good early and mid game because you're going to get your Wrath off pretty quickly, I think. And you're definitely going to have your Wrath available for you by the time you play the Behemoth for the 10 damage. So I think the deck is going to be very well refined, um, and it's going to be quite powerful. Is it as good as the God Tier decks? It actually has decent matchups, I think. But when you think about your win condition being Permafrost Behemoth, and it's a 9 play point card, it's actually kind of slow. So when you think about like Roach, Roach, I think they could kill you before turn 9, um, especially with all the card draw that they have now. So Behemoth won't be closing out games against them. Against Dragon, um, I think you're also going to be pressured a lot. It's going to... So I, that matchup might be closer than I think, but... Um, I don't think Behemoth has the end game win condition quick enough compared to the other tier 1 decks. But against tier 2 stuff, when you're just fighting for board and Behemoth comes down, I think you could definitely get there. Um, and yeah, just the mid game of Wrath Blood, I think, is going to be very strong. So yeah, this, uh, 
this is probably the only yeah this is like the only new deck that's going to be in tier one in my opinion um because it just got some really cool stuff this expansion and like in my previous video where i put bloodcraft in s tier for the new cards they got um it definitely impacted blood the most i think and finally here we have yokai shadow or midrange shadow and this is unfortunately just going to be on the top of tier three i think like mid range shadow they didn't get much they didn't get much stuff they might play like miltio or something but they didn't get too much and um while the deck they actually lost anya as well uh which was a very good decent card in the deck um so I think the deck is just going to be kind of slow. Uh, it does okay against other stuff in the tier 2 and tier 3 range. But I think it's just going to be losing against the tier 1 and the god tier. So yeah, didn't really gain anything. And um, can only compete with some stuff in the tier three, 2 and the tier 3. So that's why I just put it at the top of tier 3. Because it's still a well refined deck and has good cards. So that's why it's better than the other tier 3 decks. It's definitely a lot more consistent than the other tier 3 decks. But yeah. So after recording this video, I was scrolling through Twitter and saw this insane clip of a guy playing item shop rune and OTKing his opponent on turn 7 at 17 HP. Um, the deck actually looks pretty insane with the new spells that they're getting. So I'm actually going to be moving it up to tier 1 on the top here. So it's not quite god tier yet. I'm not convinced it's god tier at the moment. It could be. Um, but because because the deck might not be as consistent. But as long as you draw item shop item shop and play it on your turn 7. I think you're in a really good position. And you could just kill your opponent on that turn. Which is really insane to me. And there's not too many decks that I think could pressure the deck enough. And threaten killing them before by turn 7 at, in this meta. So I think this deck is going to be super powerful and it's going to be a really strong combo deck um, that is going to be similar to both Roach and Natural Dragon in terms of power level in this meta. And I actually think, um, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to set the god tier in the tier ones like this now actually. So yeah, this is my tier list for my predictions of the upcoming meta for Fortune's Hand. Like I said, uh, comment down below if there's anything you think that I missed or if there's anything you disagree on. And if you enjoyed this tier making video and you want to see more tier making videos in the future, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more Shadowverse content. I'm going to be having a lot of content for Shadowverse, especially with Fortune's Hand coming out. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.